Hi, I'm Tim Aubrey from DMAD Marine Mammal Research Association and welcome to lesson 12. In today's lesson we're going to look at how we can use the raster calculator to convert between meters and feet and do other useful conversions and also how we can use the raster calculator to select portions of our data that we're interested in. Please remember to keep liking, subscribing and most importantly sharing these videos so that we can reach as many people as possible. Thanks. Okay, in this lesson we're going to use the raster calculator for the first time. And the raster calculator is a really powerful algorithm and um, it's something which hopefully you'll quickly begin to use in your tool set. So how do we access it? Well that's very simple, we just go up to raster and raster calculator and you see we have this quite scary looking um, calculator but once we know how to do it it's relatively simple to use actually so we have our raster bands here um, so these are just all the rasters that are loaded into um, loaded into QGIS so if you wanted to see more here then we just have to load more in from our files into the map um, and then everything on the right hand side top right hand side is the results layer so this is just where we're out outputting our data so I'm just gonna save this so I'll create a new lesson because this uh, sorry a new folder because this is QGIS 2 lesson 12 and I'm just gonna save this as MNE underscore raster and then greater than or equal to 1500 uh, actually, sorry, we'll do the feet first. So, always we need to make sure that we um, have an output layer. If we don't have an output layer, then this OK won't, um, won't illuminate, so we won't be able to click it. And what we're going to look at first is how we, we can turn this data, which is in meters, into feet. Um, so, this could be useful if you're working in um, America or s some people in the UK use feet um, whereas the data we've got is in meters um, so we can just do a simple calculation uh, of our clip mask times 3.28 and this is the the raster there we've got and all I'm doing is putting time, so this little asterisk symbol, and 3.28 is the con conversion from uh, meters into feet. Obviously, if we're going the other way around, just we'd whack a divide in there instead of the, the time symbol. Um, and all we do is press OK. And you'll see that now, rather than running from minus 4 to uh, 2,369, we now run from minus 3.12 to 7,770. So that's an easy calculation we can do. Um, and yeah, it's uh, like I said, a really easy calculation we can do um, and really useful when we're swapping between units, but it can be used for lots of other things. Um, another really useful thing could be when we were swapping between, if we were working at much smaller scale, could be swapping between meters and centimeters, for, for example, things like that. Okay. So I'm just going to remove that layer because we don't need it right now. And I'm going to show you a slightly more complicated one, but another really useful thing. So again, I'm going raster and raster calculator. Um, and this time I'm just copying and pasting this expression in to make it easier, but I'm just going to talk you through each of the bits. So I've got my uh, say an expression invalid just because I'm missing a bracket here. So what I'm doing is I'm just saying that I want to select everything in this raster which is over 1500 meters. So I just want what I want to be displayed is just everything over 1500 meters um, and I'm just gonna replace this MNE raster with because that's an old file name with the clip mask raster and do the same in this one So 
So as I said, we're just taking everything um, which is over 1500 meters and we're giving it the values from our layer. So everything over 1500 meters in this, this raster and giving it the values from this raster, which is the same in this case. But we could use different rasters. And I'm just gonna call it mna underscore raster um, 1500 plus. Okay, and you'll see now my OK button is illuminated and I can just run that. And now I have everything which is a zero value here and then I have everything which is over 15,000 still in the original layer. So I can go into this, go to single pseudo band color um, and you'll see that I'll just do it this for an example because everything that is below that is going to be a, a, in the white but then everything else which is over 1500 meters has been given this new 1500 color so I'll just bring my no I'll leave it as it is um, no, I'll just bring my country color up one so you can see that bit better Does that come up um, and okay so you can see everywhere we've got more than 1500 meters we've got uh, yeah green values and everywhere below that we've got our zero but obviously we don't have to use 1500 meters if we go back to that expression in our raster calculator Then we can change this to anything. So you see now we've got two rasters in here. We've got two options. So we've got our clipped one, which is the original layer, and then we've got our 1500 layer. Okay. So this time I put my clipped mask layer in, started with a bracket, and put everything that is equal or greater to than. This time we'll just go for 300 meters, and we're going to take the values from clip mask raster layer. Okay, and you can see it's now said expression is valid, but we still don't have this illuminated okay. So this time, just going back into the same one, I'm gonna change it to 300 plus. And I'm gonna hit save. And now the okay is illuminated, and I can press that, and obviously, Give it some more color to make it a bit more obvious. Um, but if I hit apply now, you can see that we've got way more of this because we're only looking at things that are over 300. Um, and we can go the other way as well. So we can make it equal or to or smaller than a certain value. And it's just a really powerful tool to select only certain amounts of our raster. Um, okay, so that's it for this lesson. I hope you found something useful. Uh, from it. Tomorrow we're going to look at how we can um, turn this sort of data into polygons and then later in the week we'll look at how we can um, use these polygons with our habitat modeling data from before um, to refine our modeling a bit more. Okay that's it I'll see you then.